Hi class, welcome to Math is Fundamental. Today we're going to be talking about congruent figures. So we're going to start with the definition of congruent polygons, which are two polygons with congruent corresponding parts. So what that means by corresponding parts is that they have congruent sides that match and they have congruent angles that match. So we can show that by marking our polygons with slashes, dash, dashed lines. So here, if I have each side of this first polygon marked, then I need to make sure that on the other polygon, there are matching dash marks showing that those corresponding sides are congruent. Um, we also need to make sure all of the angles have corresponding angles that are congruent. So for each angle, which I will try to mark here in red, one, two, three, four, then on the other polygon, they each have to have their own matching angle. So one matches to one, two matches to two, and so on. All right, so there is the basic definition of congruent polygons. Next, we have a definition, what's called the third angles theorem. Oops, looks like I moved my, my picture just a little bit. Okay, there, fixed it. Okay, so third angles theorem is when we have two triangles, and if we know that two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of another triangle, then that means the third set of angles are going to also be congruent. So if these two angles here, let's just say I have A, B, C, and then D, E, and F, if I know that angle A is congruent to D, angle B is congruent to E, then I can use this theorem to conclude that angle C would have to be congruent to angle F, just based on this theorem, the third angles theorem. All right, so let's use what we know about triangles and what we just learned about our congruent figures and do a proof. So here we have some given information and a diagram. We always want to take whatever our given information is and put it on the diagram, draw it right into that diagram. So I know that I'm given that angle M is congruent to angle O. So I'm going to mark that on my diagram. And then next I have angle MLN, which is this one here, is congruent to angle OLN. So that's this one here. And then I know that LM is congruent to LO. So those are side lengths. So we want to mark them with the little dash marks. And MN is congruent to OM. All right, and I want to prove that these two triangles are congruent. So in order to do that, if we're using our definition that we just learned, I need to make sure I have all three corresponding pairs of sides that are congruent and all three corresponding angle pairs are congruent. All right, so that's kind of our, our game plan. We have one more set of sides and one more set of angles that we need to make sure are congruent in order to get our proof. So statements, uh, first statement is always the given information. So we want to write that in there. So angle M congruent to angle O. We have, oh my goodness, so much information. Angle LL, oh sorry, MLN congruent to angle OLN. We have LM segment is congruent to segment LO. And lastly, MN is congruent to ON. And all of that information, we know that those are all true because they're given. So we just write the word given in our reason column. All right, so now we have to think. So what else do we need? Well, I need my third set of sides to be congruent. Let's do the sides first. So I have two sets of sides. I need this set of sides to be congruent and it's a shared side. We have a property that tells us that LN has to be congruent to itself, LN. That, I mean, it's kind of silly to have to say LN is congruent to LN, but we need to show that third pair of sides, even though it's the same side. And what we do is we call that the reflexive property, reflexive 
property of congruence since we're dealing with congruent segments here. Um, and these properties we learned in some of my previous videos. So you can always go back and review those. All right, next I need my third set of angles to be congruent which are going to be these two angles in our diagram. So we need to list those here, and that would be angle MNL. MNL needs to be congruent to angle, let's see, LNO. L, um, oh, I could write it the same order as I did the other one, so let's start with O, N, L. It doesn't matter which order you write it in there. All right, now why? Why are those congruent? So that's what we need to be thinking each time is, why are those two angles congruent? Well, we just learned that if two angles of one triangle are congruent to the two angles of another, the third angles have to automatically be congruent. We call that the third angle theorem. So that's gonna be our reason uh, in our proof. All right, so now if we look at our diagram, we are done. We have all three sets of sides are congruent, all three sets of angles are congruent, which means our triangles L, M, N and L, O, N have to be congruent by the definition of congruent triangles. And you could put congruent figures, but it's nice to be a little bit more specific and use what that figure is. Here we're doing triangles. All right, and that concludes our lesson for today. So thank you so much for watching, and remember, math is fundamental.